Hi everyone, welcome to Happy to See Me. I'm Erica. So something I was happy to see this week, I got just the sweetest delivery. It was from this company called Combio & Co. So it's this Filipino jewelry and accessory company that's based in Toronto and in the Philippines. And all of their accessories are made by these Filipino artisans. And they sent me this beautiful woven purple bag. And it's inspired by two things that I love. One is ube, which is kind of like this potato that is used in a lot of Asian and Filipino desserts. And it was purple because it was inspired by BTS. So hello, Filipino desserts, BTS, being ARMY, all of the things that I loved in one. So thank you, Combio & Co. for thinking of me. And as a Filipino adult woman in Canada now, it's so cool to see so many Filipino businesses and Asian businesses and really businesses that are celebrating different cultures thriving. And it's amazing to feel like they wanted me to have one of their pieces. And it's also amazing to be able to support them. So you will see me rocking this bag this summer. I have it on my TikTok. And thank you so much, Combio & Co. for this beautiful woven purple bag. Now for this week's episode. So by listener request, I am speaking to Catherine Reeford and Craig Ramsey, the winners of The Amazing Race Canada. They had this incredibly inspirational story where Catherine was diagnosed with brain cancer that was terminal. However, that was almost 10 years ago. And on the show, you got to see this beautiful, supportive friendship between these two people who have gone through so much, plus... They are Broadway folks and theater nerds, so they are fun and vibrant. And in this episode, we got to unpack their friendship and got to learn so much more about how and why they support each other so much. So I hope you will enjoy this episode. This is Catherine and Craig from The Amazing Race Canada. Let's get into it. I am so happy that I have Catherine Reeford and Craig Ramsey on the podcast, the winners of The Amazing Race Canada. Thank you both for being here. You're yes. welcome. And a great introduction with, <laughs> with sirens. The sirens. Here we yes. go. Yay. Party. Yeah, you know it's about to pop off when it starts with the sirens. <laughs> yeah. But truly, yeah. I'm so excited to have you both here because – Fun fact, you actually were both requested guests by some listeners. So I know that there are listeners who are really pumped to hear from you today. Oh, well, that's that means, lovely. That means a lot. Yeah. Thank you, listeners. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We love the listeners. So I love asking people about life and I love asking people about reality TV. And I know we have the shared experience of being winners. So let's jump into it. Okay. One. Going into Amazing Race Canada, the two of you, best friends, you were team Broadway. So you have had so much experience being on stage, performing, having eyes on you. How did that compare to being on reality TV where now you're being yourself and you're having producers trying to produce you as yourselves? Well, this is one of the easiest roles we've ever played. It's just <laughs> us, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't have to act. We just were ourselves. And it was it was really an amazing thing to just be with him and just be ourselves and have no contact with anybody or anything. Yeah. So it was just us how and we it, used to live. <laughs> and it, it, it wasn't a gig. It was an experience. Yeah. And it was a really necessary experience for us personally uh, with our relationship and with Catherine's situation. So, yeah, it was the, easy, the, the easiest in terms of being in front of the camera and in front of people uh, experience we've ever had. Yeah. Did you guys watch The Amazing Race beforehand? Is this something that you wanted to do together? Or how did this opportunity come about? He was in town doing Romeo and Juliet with me at the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. Lord Capulet, Lady Capulet. And we said, this was so much fun. What could we do that we're together again? And you right. said, what about Amazing Race Canada? And but were you familiar with it? Did oh, you yes. Watch no, it I had I had watched it. And I was like, yes, I want to do that. But, and I watched the American one. So season yeah. 17 had a really close friend of mine, Vicky Cassiola. And I, I know James... Um, and, and tons of other people that were on it. So I watched both the American version and the Canadian one here and there, but it wasn't until we actually got invited to be part of it <laughs> that we, that watched we all really of it. studied <laughs> it. Because as you know, and I, I don't know, mm -hmm. did you with Survivor, once you knew you were going to do it, did you go back with a fine tooth comb and really review them? 
Oh, I watched every season and all the international seasons and took notes. So yeah. yes, it's just part of the process yeah. for preparing. That's what we did. Yeah. yeah, it's different when you, when you know you're going to be a part of it. You watch so much of like the time lapse mm-hmm. and and just those in, in, in like details just to see if they'll help you. And they do help. Yeah, they really mm-hmm. did. Yeah. From your studying of the past seasons, what was the most helpful to you when you were on the show? A lot of stuff that I didn't need to know, but I'm happy that I learned. Um, like knowing, making sure I was really sharp on my sign language because that really did help us a lot. Um, just like reviewing it. I knew it before, but just making sure I knew it perfectly. Uh, I think that just paying attention to uh, the logistics of things, mm-hmm. like trying to make sense of where the crew would be, having a background in uh, film and TV and theater, uh, I wanted to know how to expedite all that stuff. Like it, it, Chevrolet being a, a, uh, one of the sponsors, for instance, I was like, well, I'm going to go pretend to buy a, a Chevy. And I went and drove every single one of those ahead of time to be proficient with the driving. Things like that. That's so, so smart. The Silverado, we were last, and he's like, mm, get out of my way and went <laughs> yeah. around everybody. <laughs> that is so smart. We also had the shared experience of filming a show during COVID. In my case, I was supposed to film the show in March 2020, and then I had to wait a year and then film in March 2021. I know that with the two of you, you experienced a similar delay. So how did that affect you and all of your preparation? Well, we were cast um, the very beginning of, of 2020. We were supposed to run in the 2020 race Mm -hmm. and then um it got postponed and then postponed again and postponed again postponed again and we were like well we should stop we can't hope for it now because one i didn't know that i'd still be around to do it and Mm -hmm. two we didn't know if it was going to happen at all yeah our our situation was a little unique and eric i'm sorry you had to go through that too because it's really heartbreaking because we don't know how it's going to end up Mm -hmm. affecting the show as we know it or the experience as we think we're, we're going to have it. Mm-hmm. And with Catherine's case, um, we didn't want to get too attached to actually being able to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we had a detachment just in case something were to happen because every three months she gets an MRI. If it's stable, she's with us for another three months. Mm-hmm. That's how this brave woman lives her life. And by the time they got around to us two years later, producers were in tears calling yeah. us. And I think they actually like had to fight each other for that conversation because it was really impactful and moving for them. And they knew it would be for Canadians. Yeah. Oh, completely. A few weeks ago on this podcast, Mike Yerksa was a guest and I know he worked on Amazing Race Canada and he spoke so highly of your team and how inspirational you both were. Did you feel like your presence on the show after that delay was so much more meaningful knowing that you go through these three-month checks to make sure that you could still do it? Um, I'll let you take this one. Well, we, and this is our dynamic too. Like it, mm-hmm. it's, it's interesting now that we get this chance to, to talk to you because obviously the edits won't show a lot of the behind the scenes in order for Catherine to incredibly thrive with this. She need she needs these relationships, these al- allies, we're allies with each other where then I, I kind of step in and get the ball rolling. So then she can. I took the last question and I totally answered the wrong question. So I know that like, he's like, yeah, don't do that again. So and then, <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're right. I we, didn't we know- the other, right question. <laughs> we know each other so well. Um, but she also, I also have ADD. So what was the question again? <laughs> I know. I know. Okay. I know. I you know what? I remember. Okay, here we go. We, have, we were a hoot on the show. Like our crew, they, they rotate crews to make it yeah. fair. And I think always they were like, oh my God, how are these two getting through so well? Like, um, but... Uh, we were really good at the challenges, just terrible at navigation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we paced ourselves with sharing Catherine's information for numerous mm-hmm. reasons. Um, Catherine is not a pity party. Uh, she she also, we didn't want to use it as a crutch because we certainly didn't want that experience. Mm-hmm. She wanted to be challenged. Mm-hmm. And so I think that one by one, when, when, pe- when other teams were um, shared and it yeah. was Catherine's story to mm-hmm. share, it was so impactful and changed season eight um, it, where all of the other racers not only looked at the race differently, but mm-hmm. looked at their lives differently. Yeah. 
it was a it was a big deal during the race for the teams and for the crew too i think but mostly for the teams and, and how that win or that whatever didn't really turn into what it should have been or what it used to be you know it was it's more that you know they if they yeah. couldn't win they wanted us to win well yes and, and yes and there, no. <laughs> it, it really was difficult a season, I think, because uh, we're very close with the racers mm -hmm. and Team Fernella, um, who was in our alliance, they mm -hmm. kind of broke the alliance right after we shared the information of Catherine. Because uh, to be honest, and I don't blame them, no one signed up for a, a reality show of this nature with someone with terminal brain cancer. Mm -hmm. And they're no dummies. They know that when push comes to shove, people, and especially Canadians, their, their heartstrings are going to be pulled. And they knew that I like loving this woman, I am going to use anything to assist her legacy and for her kids to be proud of her. Because if it, if it's, it has to be for something, right? Mm -hmm. All the crap that she's been through. So even in the finale and they knew, and, and, you know, we talk about it, but it's like when we we're at the Richmond night market to skip those lines, I was like, Catherine has terminal brain cancer. She has two kids. We need this. Yeah. Wow. So I don't blame wow. them, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what? I know we just jumped into talking about Amazing Race and your experience. For the listeners who might not have watched Amazing Race Canada, are you able to share the story of Catherine's diagnosis? Yeah, I, I can. Um, I Almost 10 years ago, um, uh, it will be, well, now it has been when you play this, it'll be 10 years. June 24th is my 10 year anniversary of being diagnosed with a terminal brain cancer. They gave me two to six years to live. I had an awake craniotomy, um, July 5th. And then I and had to talk again. Learn, and then I had to relearn how to talk, write, wow. sign everything. I was in speech therapy for a long time. I did um, six weeks of radiation and four different kinds of chemotherapy. Um, and I get an MRI every three months to make sure that it's still stable. It will regrow re again. Um, they said two to six years, but it's now been 10. Uh, so I always like to say I'm past my expiration date because <laughs> I think that's funny. Um, maybe some <laughs> other people will too. Maybe people will be mad at me. But I like, it's, for me, it's I have to laugh. I have to joke about it. Otherwise, I'll just go home and cry about it. So for me, that's my best, my coping mechanism is to laugh and joke. And so it, so other people can laugh and joke with me and not be like, oh, I'm so sorry. But yes, it is. It's terrible. It's awful. Um, but I think it's still something to talk about and something that we need to um, advocate about so that we can find a cure for it. And that's what our win did on the Amazing Race Canada was help us have a higher platform to to raise awareness and to and to be the ambassadors of the brain tumor walk. And we're this is our first year. We're going to make it be many more years after this. Wow. Right now when I'm speaking to you, before we started recording, you were saying that this is your third walk this week. You are walking together throughout <laughs> Ontario to raise awareness. So congratulations and thank you for doing all of that work. He'll be doing another one here and I'll be in Winnipeg doing mine next weekend. Oh, so everyone check it out. And are you going yeah. to just do them in the summer in in Canada? They're only in July, in June. We would do them every day if we could. I yeah. mean, this is a, a big goal for us to do the race. And with winning, it is the universe aligning this story to be told. And from, I think, both our perspectives in the sense that people, when we go to these walks and, and we're uh, available to talk to people, the the families obviously are getting a lot of value from Catherine and motivation and inspiration because she has she's still with us yeah honestly mm -hmm. um and then with me like my one question with all of the supporters of these these people that have these diagnosis is how are you doing and mm -hmm. they just you know most almost Cry. all of them they crumble mm -hmm. and and that's what i think our relationship was on on the uh race yeah him helping me and me helping him, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> when I watched the clip of the two of you winning, I was in a cafe and I just burst out into tears. One, knowing the story of your friendship, but then also I thought it was so beautiful seeing the two of you. You're running down the stairs of the stadium, running towards the platform, and you're hugging and you're just complimenting each other and telling each other how much you love each other and how amazing you are. And it just seemed like such a, a beautiful moment. Is that what your friendship has always been like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it has. 
I, I think from day one, we uh, bonded um, and we hope every single person has this type of friendship. They need, they, everybody needs a Craig. It's, mm-hmm. it's like a chosen, for your chosen family. And, you know, we pray that her kids, my writer has experiences these types of relationships. And I think the timing of that with the pandemic and our show airing, it reminded Canadians that they need to reconnect with their with their friends and give them that kind of uh, love that they do with their given family. Yeah. Their chosen family. I've seen in interviews, Craig has said, as a member of the LGBT community, Catherine was his lifesaver. So what was that all about? Well, it used to be that it wasn't accepted at all ever well we're still in huge challenges right now unfortunately in 2023 so uh, your your necessary ally friendship is is still prevalent you know unfortunately but um yeah i i I think that uh i'm 200 pounds i'm a a big white guy like i understand that i've had a a very privileged existence as someone with the 2s lgbtqia plus community, right? But even still, I've had my heartbreak. I've had such difficult times where this woman has picked me up. Mm -hmm. And even in the show, it's like when you identify, I'm the only person um, that's part of the community in our season. I'm a half a person um, or a half a a, a, a team. (laughs) No, half half member, you know, Mm -hmm. like I think- I keep hearing to date still, people are like, your wife, like even downstairs, oh, yeah, oh yeah. your wife. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> not <know>. my wife. <laughs> no. um, and I, I think that the win has really helped us for her brain tumor foundation work and my outreach, especially for youth. Um, yeah, we also yeah. have, like you said, you like our name, Cancer Dancer. That's the name of our team um, on For the Walks, and you can still donate to it after the after the races are complete for a whole year. So you can donate to Cancer Dancer on the Brain Tumor Foundation website. I, I was getting at the half team. I, I think that that's on purpose because there's so many people from my community that have won the Amazing Race Canada. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. CTV, from our experience, certainly does not want to make it uh, a gay show. Yeah. Let's put it mm-hmm. that way. I mean, they mm-hmm. never once addressed that I'm married, mm-hmm. that I co-parent a 12-year-old with my husband's sister and her wife. Mm-hmm. Um, they... You know, of course, my aerobics challenge outed me (laughs) like I that alone. But still, it's disheartening that they didn't stick up and really give a platform for me immediately for the youth of this country. Mm -hmm. So now the work is to get that out there because our win is for anyone that has ever felt less than and or of um, any minority group and uh, especially for any of my community that reaches out. And for people with invisible disabilities, that's important too, because I get so many things from people that have invisible disabilities saying like, thank you for doing this because I lo- watching you, we would never know. So it's important for me to show that even though I have it, it's important. I think that if you look at your life situations separately and then together as a team on paper, you probably wouldn't think this is going to be the team that pulls it off, right? But then somehow you ended up doing it. (laughs) So in your life before the show, where did you develop that level of perseverance that would get you through the race? Well, we represent theater people. Yeah, I think think from theater – I think we got it from theater or, or because we were in theater, we already have that, but I think that it made it stronger and just pushed us. <laughs> You're going to say something. No, gonna I'm say? just going to oh. say that, that yeah. I don't think the producers are ever going to have theater people back on that I know. show. I don't think oh, so. Really? No, I think because what they learned, what all, what everyone learned that we already knew is that theater people, eight shows a week, were really yeah. strong. We're actors, singers, mm-hmm. dancers, we're triple threats. So any of those performing challenges, uh, of course, we, we you know we sailed through, mm-hmm. although our season had the least amount of those of any other previous season, mind yeah. you. But also, we study for roles. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. they're, they're, we learn sign language. We learn um, how to play a character to get through situations. Yeah. So our skill sets from just being professional theater people mm-hmm. came in handy for our season for sure. With performers, I know that it's also common to be auditioning and to be hearing no and then to continue yeah. to push through. So I can imagine that gives you a sense of fearlessness too when it comes to taking on these challenges during the race. To- completely. 
Uh, are you no. <laughs> done my Sergio story? <laughs> no, tell, tell your story. Tell me, please. Um, so I, my very first audition before I, I got, it was actually in Stratford. I performed in Stratford. And I went to an audition in Toronto, got cut right away because there were so many of us. And I heard, I was at a party a couple days later and heard somebody say, oh, I have my call, my final callback for West Side Story and Sergio is going to be there. So I went home, dyed my hair black and went back and with no paperwork and said, um, Sergio told me to come. And they said, uh, who are you? You look a bit familiar. I'm like, no, I've, I've never been here before, but Sergio really wanted me to come. And Sergio was indeed the choreographer um, and hired me that night. And wow. so like, I'm used to, I'm used to being, I'm used to like, doing sneaky things and doing and and being aggressive with what I want. Yeah, and not taking no <laughs> until taking it's no. obvious, you know. Yeah. And there's lots of no's in the business, of course. I also think our friendship of um of helping each other through those difficult moments and those uh negative no's and almost to an extreme where like our coping mechanisms with each other was you know i didn't get a gig uh and catherine would be like well good luck with for those producers oh that show's gonna be (laughs) terrible without you you know we just build each other up and i think using that relationship we never tore each other down on the race and those difficult moments, we were always uplifting each other. Yeah. And I mean, we just laugh yeah. in difficult moments. We've had difficult moments. Trust me. Yes. We have had difficult moments in our lives. Yes. yes. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> Was there a part of your friendship or a part of your dynamic that you wish made the show, but you didn't see it on screen? Huh. That's a good question. Wow. That is a good question. Um, Was there any for you? Oh yeah, I mean my my best friend on the show was this woman who is thirty years older than me. She, no, twenty, twenty. Oh, she'll be pissed that I said thirty years older. She was only twenty years older than me. We're still best friends today, but the show didn't really show how we became friends and how close we truly were because now it's been two years since I've been on the show and she and I are talking about how we're going to go to Beyonce together next month. So it was a real friendship, but you didn't get to see it. Yeah. Love yeah, that. I don't. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the they never show that, that we're friends with any of the teams at mm-hmm. all. But you know, you we with I mean, each other the alliances they I, showed a little bit of. I but. think what they didn't show producers of the race stepped up, and we were part of a W five mm-hmm. uh, piece mm-hmm. that that was done that kind of shared what the viewers weren't able to see, mm-hmm. which was this dynamic of. Uh, assisting Catherine to get her and help her to thrive, but also how brave she was to put herself in these vulnerable positions. People look at her, they they hear from her, they think that she's completely functioning and she's able to do that because she puts herself in, again, multiple challenges leading up to even the race and then on the race that better her with what she gone through with her surgery. Or, or that people can help me with. And I like, and I'm, and it took me a long time to ask for that help. But once I did, I, my life completely improved and changed. When, so. when we were on the race, there was times where I'm like, okay, where are we going again? And she honestly would talk about two episodes before, like she'd say the dog park and the, or dog challenge. And she's like, no, no, why am I, why is my brain doing that? There were so many times where she wasn't able to trigger it, but then here she is like, <laughs> How brave. I'm going to do this roadblock, you know. Um, I it's love remarkable. roadblocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, like if you're there, why not just throw yourself into the challenge and do the roadblock? I, I feel like yeah. that was probably amazing representation for so many people because as we're recording this on video, I'm looking at you, Catherine, and you look so graceful and put together. You would never think just by looking at you that you have gone through as many med- medical challenges as you have. But I think yeah. that by showing people on the show that there are disabilities that you don't necessarily see, there are people who need assistance and you might not have ever thought that, it probably, one, is validating to a lot of people and also opens up a lot of people's eyes. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope so. Um, like, even if it affects one person, that's great. Um, but also, It too- does on a daily basis. I mean, we can't go anywhere. Uh, Catherine's influence has been incredible. It's so inspiring to people. And just meeting people that have brain cancer as well has been really emotional. I get a lot of emails and, and Instagram messages from people that have them, and I try to reach out to all of them too and and like 
actually have conversations with that, them. That's and, because they know because they're going through it and it for them it's almost impossible for what you've been able to do, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. but for Canadians, I think the more they understand and get to know Catherine and the limitations or the obstacles she certainly has, mm-hmm. I think the more impressed they are with not only her, but they're inspired to overcome whatever non you know obstacles they might personally struggle with. <laughs> You know what? I want to get into more about this and more about how your diagnosis changed both of your lives. But let's take a quick break and then we will dive right into it. So I have read in other interviews that, Catherine, you've said that getting the cancer diagnosis changed your outlook on life. So how did that change? Well, I sort of had a plan, right? I had a plan. I was going to do – I had just graduated as a nurse. So I had a plan and I was going to work for this many years and we were going to save up money and we're going to do, and then I were, I was diagnosed and I was like, well, that's out the window and I want to do what brings me joy. And so I spent about a year in treatment and stuff and radiation, chemo and surgery. And I thought, well, what brings me the most joy performing? So I got back into performing shape and, um, auditioned when I was bald for stuff that I knew I wasn't going to get. I just wanted to. Uh, learn the lines and also learning the lines helped my brain um, with learning stuff, rewire. everything, rewire, rewire and and like learning dance combinations at at, um, at at different auditions was very helpful and and like learning how to speak again was helpful with that as well. <laughs> yeah. Can can I fill in maybe some missing gaps here? Yeah. Yes. Catherine Catherine's life, um, we really did a great interview with Broadview Magazine, um, uh, a spiritual magazine. And in it, we she talks about how the struggles that she's really gone through that people don't know, like her L.A. time, um, her bad relationships, her, her uh, substance abuse, like things like that, where um, the and this is the hardest question, actually, I witness for me, for me listening to it about her is because um she's continue when she says the the she's grateful for the diagnosis it's hard it's a hard pill mm-hmm. to swallow mm-hmm. because this is a terminal illness but really her priorities became in line mm-hmm. and she decided what she really wanted with life and her life was out of control there was a few years that we didn't talk at all because anything i said went on completely like over her head, she just didn't care. Some of that might have been the brain tumor. Yeah, we don't mm-hmm. know, um, but it really has made her the most incredible caring mother, uh, such a, a attentive friend, and just Catherine. Um, it was all about dreams before, but now you're actually in the reality, mm-hmm. to, and you're getting to those dreams this mm-hmm. way. Yeah, where I don't think you would have before. Well, I was just yeah. I I don't think I would have. I had yeah. sort of changed my world many, many times and nothing was really working. Like even the divorce, like n- right now she's going through a divorce, like how brave she is to just change what's around her and prioritize. Mm-hmm. And that's because of the diagnosis. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to spend the rest of my time I have left with somebody that does not appreciate me or what I do or can be happy for me. It's almost like if there's supposedly a set amount of time left, even though you have proven you can go way past the expiration date, your priorities just quickly click into place. And what works for you is what's going to stay and what doesn't work for you, get rid of it. Cut it out for sure. Bye-bye. A few weeks ago, I interviewed Taylor Lindsay Noel. She's a disability advocate. She told me the Mm -hmm. story of the accident that left her paralyzed. And then she said, people don't realize – When someone in your life goes through a huge medical change, it permanently changes the life of the loved ones and the people around them too. So Craig, from your experience, how did Catherine's diagnosis change your life? Well, she's inspiring to me. I mean, I wouldn't have done the amazing race if if she wasn't a part of my life and if she wasn't so brave, you know, to uh, handle any challenge that comes her way. I, I think that uh, it's shocking for me, the strongest person that I know in my life could be faced with this kind of obstacle. Catherine could do everything. And I, I kind of put that pressure on her. I think that's where it came in handy with the race because it is all or nothing. Like I just, I just like, well, you got to do it, you know, and we've had that. Relationship. But the diagnosis 
made me a little more proactive with caring for her in it, it the skill sets my skill sets shouldn't be the one that is helping her out i have add you know like <laughs> um but i also it's an opportunity to be more invested in her kids future mm-hmm. Um, and, and more invested in cutting the crap out and really getting to the nitty gritty of our friendship. And it's made it stronger because I asked the questions, you know, what do you want with your, for your kids down the road? What are the messages I'm going to deliver? Um, we had that discussion this morning too. <laughs> we, we do all the time. Um, all the time we're together. And, and I, th- I think that it, it's, it's important. It, it, it helps me um, just be a better person. The two of you met 20 years ago, and it's incredible to see that the friendship is still so strong these decades later. 25 years ago. 25? Um, that's like a, a quarter century. Oh my gosh. You have both gone through so many different changes. You've lived in different countries. Of course, there's Catherine's diagnosis. There's jobs and marriages. How did you keep the friendship so strong over the last 25 years? Honesty. Yeah. I think b- being so brutally honest about where we are in our lives and our relationships and yeah. all of that, we counted on each other. It's also likeness. Like yeah. we we had the same goals. Yeah, we did. We, we well, at first we just wanted to be on Broadway. <laughs> and then once we were on Broadway, we were like, well, we did it. Well, now what next? You know? Let's move to LA. Let's move to LA. So we, we had a lot of the same goals, but we also had a lot of the same um, uh, whys, like why mm-hmm. we wanted to do something because it meant so much to us in a way that is a bit different than everybody else. I'm not describing that very well. Um, we had a lot of, I'm trying to think of the I, this is where I can't think of a word. I know the word I want to say, but I can't think of it. And so <laughs> sometimes he'll guess the word and I said, that's it. But other times, um, um, purpose. Say, yes. Yeah, alignment. Like we're yeah. also, I, yeah. I, I think beyond this earth plane, right? Mm-hmm. Catherine and I are so connected mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Our, our higher selves mm-hmm. have assisted each other out <laughs> yeah. um, consciously and unconsciously. Mm-hmm. Uh, even on the race, like miracles happened for us. And so whatever this partnership is in this life is far bigger out, up and around. And we recognize that. And we even, when we ever we talk about that and whenever we connect, like we meditate to connect our energies and things like that. And we did every day before the race. Mm-hmm. It's shocking what we're able to achieve. And that's some of the keynote speeches that we're doing is how to achieve miracles. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think we have a winning solution of honesty and um, yeah, being connected. Honesty and connection and trust. Yeah, trust. I love that you brought up that you have common whys and common purpose because I feel like I'm also the type of person when I think about a, a challenge or the next chapter, I don't think about the what or the how. I think about, okay, why do I want to do this? And why do why do I want to grow this way or what do I want to get out of it? And then if you have your whys in place, then how it happens, that's all going to fall into its place in its own way. So what would you say is your shared why? I would say the ability to affect. Yeah, to affect change, to affect positivity, positivity to affect um, the love for everything like not like everyone, the love for everyone, instead of I want this person and this person, just love of everyone. Growth. Mm -hmm. I think we we have grown so much and we've grown so much together. Mm -hmm. Uh, And in our mid forties, I think that's where a lot of the other teams too, Mm -hmm. like we, we continue to, I think, help others grow by living our authentic lives. Mm -hmm. And it's not perfect by any means. And I think that's (laughs) probably the winning recipe that's, too yeah, that's yeah mm-hmm. nothing is perfect nobody's perfect i mean we but... come back from the race and Catherine's getting a divorce yeah mm-hmm. you know and we're starting and she's starting to talk about that bravely yeah. too and that's helping more people mm-hmm. um, everybody's like oh me too oh me too and this mm-hmm. is you know and i'm like oh great i'm not alone <laughs> we we wanted at uh, many times we wanted other people to win the race because mm-hmm. oh. we were fine with what our journey was and, and what we were getting out of it. Mm-hmm. However, towards the end, we're like, we want to win. win because <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I think that the story 
We needed that win for the story to be continued to be told. I needed it, even the win money for the home here in Canada to reconnect, to have a bigger influence and, and to be grounded and safe here. But ultimately, Catherine's story needed to be told. And it makes sense that she won. I mean, can I ask for you too? Was your win destined, do you feel? Was it destined? Oh, you know what? When, because, so I had been watching Survivor since I was a kid and Canadians were not eligible to be on Survivor until 2018. So I applied as soon as Canadians were eligible to be on the show. But before that, before I was even eligible to be on the show, I would joke around with every single person in my life. Oh, when I win Survivor or one day when I'm on Survivor or after I win Survivor, this is what's going to happen. So when I just think about how crazy it is that I was the first person living in Canada to ever get cast on this show, and then I won, mm -hmm. you can't Canadian deny, perfect. I don't know, yeah. it means something, right? It's leading yeah. up to something. But look at what you're doing mm -hmm. and look at the theme of your even show right now, right? Like, uh, obviously, you're destined for this path of what it is. And that doesn't mean that people need to win either. Like yeah. there's plenty mm -hmm. of good that are being done, even with our cast mates mm -hmm. on our season. But I think the win in particular for Catherine and people that can relate to Catherine's obstacles was necessary. The mm -hmm. universe stepped in, other racers stepped in, mm -hmm. et cetera, to, to have this winning solution. And you stepped in, mm -hmm. your higher self outlined and arranged all of this. Yeah. It's truly my pleasure to share to have you on the show and to talk about this because I think that what started for me in my experience being on Survivor was, you know, I was a little kid, I watched the show, my mm -hmm. grandpa who lived with me had just passed away before the show had started, so I started watching the show to process my grief and then it ended up being this presence in my life all through growing up. And I thought that, oh, I just wanted to go on to the show and win. And I didn't realize that after I came off the show that it had created a, a validating experience for so many women, so many people of color, so many immigrants. And through me just being myself, it affected people. And I think that that's the same with both of you. Of course, Catherine, on such a profound level where so many people who are dealing with something that can be so scary, you're showing people that there's hope. There, there is truly such a beautiful purpose to everything you did on Amazing Race. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, it, we were teammates. It was, mm -hmm. it was Craig, too. You know, and he mm -hmm. helped me show that. And he, like, well, even when we were doing interviews, he was like, do you want to talk about this? You know? <laughs> well, I call it Catherine's win. I do. And she always is like, no, it's our win. <laughs> um, but, you know, let's be honest. It, it is Catherine's win. And it needs to be Catherine's win. Uh, because the inspiration is endless for me, for anyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, but also to prove that you need assistance, you need help, you need to have a best friend, you need to have somebody there to support you, and then that's your role is is that is shown off to, right? Yeah, because yeah. because again, you're you're so vulnerable, yeah. and you are willing to bring me in to help you and trust and I mean because that's why I trust you. your relationship yeah. your marriage isn't what didn't work yeah. like in people can relate to that you yeah. have to find the people in your life that are there for the right reasons mm -hmm. and that can assist and and pull you through mm -hmm. the dark and t in they have to be invested in you mm -hmm. that's what that's what we have mm -hmm. I mean more times than not on the race it was it was sort of like we needed each other it's a team show and we more than anyone needed each other. Yeah. And that re relationship and that dynamic is the, a, a winning factor for anyone that's win a, one amazing race. Yeah. You fill in the missing links of your, your teammate. Mm -hmm. I feel you complimented each other so well on the show and that's part of what helped you to win. I think that that's probably one of the most important factors that helped you to win. And I think, Craig, you do deserve a pat on the back too because you demonstrated so much bravery. I feel that it could be really easy for someone to get this news about somebody who's close to them and for it to be too scary and for them to want to almost contract and, and walk away because the pain could be a lot. But instead, you were there. You stuck with it. You went on this crazy adventure together. 
there there's a episode is it seven or eight where you're up in the biplane and you know that morning what they don't show is that uh, mike actually producer mike he in the morning said you know what do you want to get from the day and Catherine's like what i want to get from the, the day from the whole amazing race experience is the opportunity to fly up in the air feel the wind in my hair yeah. because that's where i'm going to be sooner than i ever wanted to be and i'm going to be looking down at my kids when i go and i want that experience on earth to know where i'm going to be and and that visual of looking down and then she opens up a roadblock <laughs> that says fly a biplane of yeah. course i lost it mm -hmm. wow like there were so many moments on the race that Catherine's getting her manifestations and her check marks mm -hmm. and you're right like uh it, it is very crippling mm -hmm. to me at times and i just had to remind myself i can't sit in that place and be of service to her mm -hmm. i i'm not gonna i'm gonna uplift <laughs> i'm gonna be okay and then i but i also allow as someone that is supporting her my moments to crash and i did mm -hmm. And then I came down and I was like, I saw it. And I was like, let's go. <laughs> I had no idea he was crying. But I needed those me that too. <laughs> I would be distracted if I didn't process yeah. what that is. And that's the work that we're doing when we are doing keynotes and we're talking about allies with in supporters um, with Catherine's terrible diagnosis. That is a universe moment. You cannot make mm -hmm. up the fact that that was the challenge that day. I know the two of you know each other so well, but was there anything that happened during the race that was a surprise to either of you? For him, he'll say no, um, not because he, he knows like everything about me. But the one thing I did not know about Craig was that he could play pool, um, that he was like a pool shark, like serious. But so we played snooker, which was not pool, but I was, I don't even know which end to hold. So um <laughs> So I, I was like terrified when that was our challenge to yeah. like beat another team. And I was like, it's just going to be like the croquet. We're going to lose everything. <laughs> it, and I want to ask you this question too, if you don't mind, but like mm -hmm. this show is very real. The, the producers cannot affect or change the outcome of the, our show. Mm -hmm. So, but however, as a player and understanding that um, uh, I guess sometimes less is more, and when they ask me in the car, you know, ahead of time, oh, do you play snooker? No, the answer, uh, the authentic answer is no, I don't. I don't know what snooker is, but I do know how to play pool. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes those moments of not sharing everything about you to producers and or to other um, people on or the to show. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do, do help, like even sign language, the fact that we yeah. showed up and we're like, oh, I'm learning sign language yeah. to the school of students. Yeah. And they're like, what? Yeah. And do I was you, like spelled out, my name is Catherine Referred, you know. <laughs> did you find that you on Survivor had to play your own game even with cameras and producers? Hmm. Well, Survivor, similar to Amazing Race, they can't really intervene and change the outcome of a challenge or change who the winner is because since it's a game show, there's a lot of laws around how they can't affect the ending. So yeah, producers can ask questions. They, they'll, I think they have an agenda in mind for what they want to talk about, whether it's at tribal council or in your confessionals, but they can't actually tell you to vote in, in a different way. Right. Did I feel like there was a game or anything in terms of producers. I don't think I was necessarily trying to game them, but there would be, you know, I'd withhold information from my cast members in order to be underestimated. There were things that I never said that I was necessarily good at, but then we do a challenge and then all of a sudden, okay, people realize that I'm really good at something and I'll, I'll deal with that later. Um, but I think that through, uh, I used to work in public relations before being on Survivor. So I had an, a, a bit of an understanding about TV and cameras and all of that stuff. So I would notice just little things with production that could potentially give me a hint for something. So when you're at camp, there are teams of TV cameras with producers and they follow around certain conversations. Some of the cameras are bigger, some of them are smaller. So then I think, okay, if I'm here and it's the small camera, that means that there's probably a high stakes conversation happening somewhere else where there's the bigger crew. So let me, you know, go on a walk and try yeah. to figure out who's talking and then try to yeah. figure out some information from there. We had a couple things like that too. Yeah. I, I just think that the race 
is it, you have to follow the rules, but you have to bend the rules. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that that's where being a smart racer comes in handy. Mm-hmm. I think even more so in the American version than the mm-hmm. Canadian one, but also we lived in the States for half of our lives, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And and I think that there, there was some gain in that when we did the Canadian version of the Amazing Race Canada. Yeah. yeah. What, what did you gain from that? I'm curious. I, Just not being as polite, but I mean. No, that's not, that's not, I don't think that's the correct word. Just not polite. Um, not being right to the point, mm-hmm. being right to the point of everything. I think the exact opposite. I don't think, I think it's that, like even the Alliance, for instance, the, yeah. our Alliance challenged Canadians, viewers of the Ray, of the Amazing Race Canada more than any other season or any other factor, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that that's because we, we've been on stage. We've never been had a solo show. We only work with ensembles. Mm-hmm. We know the, the um, necessity to have people on your side as well. Um, but I think just, I think just figuring out three steps ahead yeah. and all these factors. Like when we talked to other racers afterwards, like Cassie and Jamaica are like, Oh, we did not run our race like that. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, but like the crew, like who's fast, who's not, what yeah. challenges are you, you're going to um, have to maybe attempt differently because of who you have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I know I don't say that to demean Canadians. Let me, no. let me be honest. I think no. that when you, when we lived in the States for, for that long, we, we've had a lot of experiences. We've seen a lot of people and we've done a lot of TV. Mm-hmm. Like I had, um, a, I've had two reality shows on Bravo already before doing the amazing race Canada. Catherine mm-hmm. was on my second show. Um, I think that you, you're in so many situations, business wise, even that you yeah. just know how to navigate those things. Right. I mm-hmm. ran, an, I ran a mortgage company for three years in Los Angeles. I know how to talk to people and how to yeah. have them explain things that they would probably not tell anybody else, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think it's good to have the experience from both sides of the border. In my case, I was a Canadian and I played with Americans and then things that I didn't realize would be an advantage ended up being an advantage. So many of the viewers watched the show and they thought I was the nicest, kindest person ever because I just had manners. So when I'd walk into a challenge, I'd say good morning to the host. When I'd leave a challenge, I'd say thank you. For me, I thought I was just being standard Canadian. But I guess if you compare me to all the Americans, I was the nicest person ever. But in Canada, that's just how we act. So yeah, there's definitely benefits when you bring a different culture into it. I think, let me clarify kind of, and really now answer the question with that. It's boundaries. I think that mm-hmm. we yeah, have such that's... solid boundaries, like even with um, Beverly and Veronica, I want to call I, her I Vanessa was gonna, on purpose, <laughs> um, but even them, it's like, um, I, I cut the crap and I, mm-hmm. I was like, you, you're not victims. Like mm-hmm. all of us are capable of, of winning this. All of us are capable of losing it. I don't want to hear it anymore. A mm-hmm. lot of stuff didn't get aired, of course, yeah. and that's fine. Um, but even anytime there was any situation that needed boundaries set, we have no problem yeah. doing that. And that mm-hmm. certainly assisted in us progressing on The Amazing Race Canada. And that's sometimes more of an American thing. Yeah. And and the good part of America, yeah. let me tell you. Because yeah. mm-hmm. there's lots of bad stuff. There's a lot of, of <laughs> difficult things going on right now. But it, it is a good part because yeah. we're we're not building up resentment. We're getting something out really quick. And that goes even when we're talking when we have a problem with producers or format or anything like that. Right. Straight and to the point. I would love to see more Canadians set their boundaries in that manner, mm-hmm. respectfully. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, boundaries are important no matter what country you're from. I feel like I'm quite nice, but also I have rock solid boundaries. If I don't want to do something, I'm absolutely not doing it. If I don't want to spend time with somebody, I'm let's not waste anybody's time. I'm not going to do it. And I think that that's just better for everybody. Marika, Julie Black, like there's yeah. other racers that were really, really great with that too. Yeah. And it benefited them. Mm-hmm. And, and the rest of the teams too. Like with Marika... She she helped a lot. But, oh yeah, like, so yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the other teams, not just them. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask. I know that you've probably got so many inspired messages from viewers. Is there any message that you got that has really stood out? Not one in particular, but just I don't know. You you take this one first. I have to think a bit. Sure. 
Um, I, I think that on a daily basis, we get some unique message that yeah. is, is really impactful to an individual. What they got from our race, us racing on the race, that we might not have even thought of. Like uh, the fact that they they loved that we wanted to experience as much of Canada together. And, you know, this um, woman told me how she, her, her husband's last month of his life, they went to places that we went to and with the same attitude. Um, yeah. So no, I, I would answer the same thing. Like it, yeah, it's, it's not just, one person. Yeah. It's not one person. It's just the time that they take to write you a little message or to write, I got a couple of cards. Or to come up and say um, hi. Or to come up and say hi, but I got some cards written out in tiny little writing and I've received those in the mail sometimes too. Um, just like saying thank you for being a representative and thank you for um, being such a positive hope and impact in our life. Um, and to me, like even one of those messages would have made it worth it, but to get them all like every day, a couple times a day is, is wonderful. My community has been incredibly supportive. Unfortunately, a lot don't know about uh, our win um, mm -hmm. because I don't think it was well um, publicized, mm -hmm. especially as someone that's part of the uh, community. Uh, but there's tons of kids that are really inspired by our win, and I think they really appreciate that I dedicate it to them. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. All right. I want to ask you a question before we wrap up. This one's a bit lighter, but okay. – if you could choose any Broadway musical to describe your Amazing Race Canada journey, what would it be? Oh, my gosh. Uh, um, oh. It's going to have to be a new musical. <laughs> oh, an original production. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start working on that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, win a Tony, too. Why not? Right, yeah. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. I would say one of my yeah. first big productions was the pre-Broadway North American tour of Mamma Mia. <gasps> and I think because Mamma Mia is so fun yeah. and light mm -hmm. and our race was that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. continues to be, you know. Yeah. And But the relationships, it's like it, it's such mm -hmm. Sophie to find who her dads are and us to get that next clue and figure it out. <laughs> and But also keep some things from, yeah. from others and then have your best friends there. So Mamma Mia. Mamma yeah. Mia. Yeah, because I've done that too. So that was it's that's a good one too. Mm -hmm. And and the songs are amazing. And I always want to sing them too. Listen, I'm a dancing queen. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah, dancing queen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that one. I, yeah, excellent scenery, excellent dancing. What more can you want? Yeah. Thank you both for being on the podcast today. Can you tell everybody what you're up to now and where people can find you if they want to follow along yeah on craig ramsey fit on most socials uh, easy google search uh and uh, Catherine and i have a lot of initiatives together we're in development of a couple of big projects uh we're guest speaking together and separately yeah. a lot um which is we're told is, is very impactful yeah and inspiring for people uh, yeah mine is Catherine reford um you can find me under that name and i'll show you everywhere i am <laughs> lots of pictures i'm assuming um but um we have websites and stuff as well well thank you both so much for being here i'm so happy i got to see a bit more of you and learn more about you and i'm inspired so i hope that everybody will follow you and check you out but thank you so much Yay. thank you thank you so much i hope you enjoyed Catherine reford and craig ramsey I will make sure that I post a link to their brain tumor walk in the show notes so you can check it out in case you want to donate. And thank you to the listeners who have requested Catherine and Craig on the show. If you do have ideas for guests that you would be happy to see, let me know and I can try to make it happen. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. If you have a nice review, I will read it on the show. And please follow the podcast on Instagram and on YouTube. It is at happy to see me pod. So thank you so much for spending time with me this week and I will see you next week.